Andrew Lynn. We prefer to say pride of Peacock, actually. <laughs> um, Russell and I were separated when we were very young. You'll learn more about him a little bit later. Um, but we've gone on to slightly different careers and very similar in other ways. So we're very pleased to have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit today about our angles um, on things. So um, about associations forum, we're the main network of associations in Australia and there's lots and lots of associations. There's an association for, for everything as many of you found. Uh, I recently heard there was a sword, in the United States, there's a sword swallowers association, so goodness me, and uh, what the um, retention rate of people in that industry is, I don't know, but uh, amazing that there's one. Now, very important, and the reason that uh, Russell and I are here today is because um, of, of the fact that we are such clients, uh, associations uh, and, and executive PAs in the corporate world through uh, the PAs are, are great clients for, for conferences and events and therefore relevant, very relevant to the Bureau. My personal career is I've worked most of my time in the association sector. I've been very fortunate to do that. Um, Juliet, I, I dropped my law degree a year before you did, so well, well done, I didn't quite finish. But relevant to me, and I was very fortunate that I got a job with the Institute of Chartered Accountants and I was the, the fancily named Professional Development Manager and that meant that I put on the events. Uh, and it was for, for, for organised associations that once you got your chartered accountancy qualification, you then continued on and had to get your points and do, do your knowledge. So I have been an events manager for an association during my career. Every association is distinct following the theme of the conference today. Well, that the, the difference is their strength. They are specifically aimed at their membership and, and people, very importantly, you need when you work with associations, you need to know that they crave to learn with their peers. Everyone wants, the reason this is such a great conference is with the fact that you're with your peers and you have so much in common and that you're learning from each other. Um, the role that Associations Forum plays is we, we go, and there's a certain amount of basic rules about running an association, the governance of the board uh, and the management of the association that is similar. So we, whilst we work with different groups who have very different causes, uh, they all have to be well run. So that's the role that we play at Associations Forum. We did a survey uh, that came up with some statistics. So I'm going to spend most of my presentation telling you a little bit about the survey and some points in this. The, um, a quick uh, slide there, the ones who subscribed were, uh, half of them were professional and the other half were industry. The main difference, and I think you've got a bit of an idea about this, but it's very relevant in an association to know whether they represent the professional or the industry. The difference is that a doctor works for a hospital, so a doctor is a member of a professional association, and the hospitals are members of, of a, a hospitals or a, or a, or a health-related association. But the, the, and both of them run a lot of conferences, and I think you'll find it's generally the professional associations who do the most, because it's very, very important for every professional to keep learning about the field that they work in, and that the more studies they have done, the higher they have gone, the more that they keep on learning, which is why medical associations have so many, so many conferences of such high calibre. The uh, locations where events are run in our survey about uh, within the last 12 or, or so months, um, I think that's probably uh, understandable. Um, that that's where, so th these are the cities where people run, run their events. It doesn't say whether they're large or small, but these are the cities that are covered. That's why they don't add up to 100%. And the people responsible for organising the events, this is, I think, a very interesting statistic that it is actually the in-house association managers who run most of the events. You hear a lot about PCOs and PCOs are wonderful because they are the profession, the outsourced professionals who run the, who, who an association says, can you run our conference or our world congress? But 70% but of people responsible for organising events are actually the in-house association staff. 21% is a combination of in-house and PCOs. Only 6%, uh, well, uh, 2%, the bottom one, is solely by the PCO, and the 6% is a combination there. Uh, hands up if you're surprised by that. Any, any viewpoints there? Okay, 
most of you most of you didn't throw up your hand, so that either that might mean I probably should have asked the other the question the other way around. That might mean that um, you weren't aware of that, but I think that is very relevant to know um, that it's you really need to be making sure you're dealing with the in-house uh, people at at your association. Uh, staff who work for uh, the events, a number of full-time equivalent staff working on events within an association range from less than one to up to ten full-time equivalent staff members. Now that's big. Ten people in the events department is big. The average was just under two. So lots of people out there working for uh, associations in events. The types of major events are 63% is a conference uh, with a trade exhibition. Conference only 20%, trade exhibition only four and then other. We certainly would reinforce the fact that it's very sensible that if you're running a conference that you will have a trade show with it as well. Uh, the delegates like to be able to go and wander and mix and mingle and talk to the suppliers at the time uh, without having to do an appointment or just to stay in touch or to subtly check out the, the, the opposition in that way. So I think that's a, a, a great thing and most associations luckily realise it and, and some, but I'd also mention that some of the trade shows, some of the industry, when, when it's a pure trade show uh, like the boat show or the uh, Australian Dental Exchange, that type of show, they are very, very, very big and that they actually make it primarily a trade show and sometimes they tack on a little bit of education as well. Frequency of events. Twice or more per year is, is a little unusual, but some associations realise that let's, we, we're on for a winner and we've actually got to have what we consider our major event and we run it twice a year. Vast majority have it once a year and 16% have it every second year. We, when we, we do a, a lot of talks to boards of associations and we say to them, if you are running your most profitable and your major event, every, uh, why don't you run it every year? And some of them say, oh, it's too much work. Well, I personally think that by the time you're running one, if you're going to get the cycle going, you may as well keep it going every year because you'll forget after two years. And also, other competitors sometimes <coughs> come into the market, commercial, commercial competitors, and fill that, that off year as well. So we, we often say to associations who don't run an annual conference and who run a bi-annual conference, which I think is different to biennial, I always get those two mixed up, but once every two years, we think it, you may as well do it, do it every year. But sometimes, if you give an idea that to a board of directors and an association, in nine years they might do something about it because they do sometimes take a little while to, get to make some of those decisions. Rotation of major events. We asked uh, the survey, the association associations about this and they said uh, rotation of an association's major event is common practice for the majority of survey not-for-profits with 71% indicating they would, they rotate uh, the destination. Of those associations that don't rotate their major event, Sydney was the most common city in, in which to hold the major event with 60% indicating they've consistently held their conference in Sydney. Melbourne ranked second with 15%. So that was a unique, a unique score in that way. Rotation, uh, the most common rotation policies were given rotation across all state with members, rotation across the Eastern Seaboard and rotation based on price, sponsorship, offers and availability. And these are the things that from Bureau's perspective you need to go and find out what the associations are doing and make sure you're on that rotation schedule of course. Key factors influence the cho influencing the choice of destination uh, venues and facilities, uh, cost, city, accessibility, location of major membership base, destination appeal, and then it falls away a little bit there to, to the end. Uh, interesting, look at the one at the bottom, Bureau, Bureau Assistance and Financial Support. They are not uh, the key factors influencing the choice of a destination. And uh, associate, uh, it's, it's something there, but people in Australian associations, I believe, make their, ch and I think, I verify what, what I, I read here and what our survey says, they really want to know it's the right city, the cost of accessibility, um, so that, that is why um, that is not a major, a major factor. Conference Bureau Utilisation, Associations Forum Events Survey found that 54% of survey participants had never, ev had never used the support and services of the different si state, city and regional 
uh, Convention Bureau. The survey found that the financial assistance by Bureau had limited influence in choosing a destination with 74% saying it was of limited or no importance, 18% indicated it was of somewhat important and 8% rank it as very important. And I ask you to think about this as well and wait for my brother Russell to um, give his statistics on that one as well. So they're two statistics that um, you will be interested in when you hear from, from both of us. Um, okay, services used by the bureaus, uh, sourcing venues, site inspections, marketing assistance, financial support for mills, international bid support, national bid support and other. And lead time in organising an event, um, more than three years, two to three years, I was quite surprised to find that most um, associations do it with, it only with 30% 30, 30 of them only takes one year and, um, and an amazing 35%. Um, I think associations need to do a bit more long term planning. And delegate numbers, uh, quick look at that, I'm nearly up over time, but uh, it, it's, it's quite good. Uh, we like to see the 14%, we want all those numbers to go up. Those are nice healthy numbers at the top. The median number of delegates was 450, and that's a good, a good number with delegate numbers ranging from 40 to 9,000. Trends are, and, you, and this is another bit of good news I can share with you, there is a 38.6% increase in delegate numbers, 34% it says it's stagnant, and only 6% uh, of those people who, who said there was a trend said that delegate numbers are decreasing, so the good news is we're doing well. well. Now, my closing comments are that association, uh, conferences and, and education are core services of associations and they are major contributors to profit. So it's very, very important for you to know that the events that the associations run in your destinations, they, the, the, don't, don't ever believe the term not for profit. They need to make a profit and they make good profits. Associations are increasing in equity, <coughs> which means more resources can put into <coughs> arranging and promoting meetings. That means that there's more money in the associations and they are investing more in more staff, so it's a good news story there. F uh, finally, a couple of points. As well as helping their region, the bureaus assist the associations to make the right choices and we thank the association sector, we thank the bureau for your great efforts. You, you really do play a great role in spreading the message there um, in a neutral way, uh, in, in, a, in a venue neutral way and um, the work that you do means that my associations do an even better job for the members. Thank you very much, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you.